Britain's government is trying to put a lid on economic and political turmoil after the Brexit vote. Members of the British Parliament will meet today for the first time since Thursday's vote to leave the European Union. Prime Minister David Cameron will speak to lawmakers following the announcement that he will resign by October. Eleven top officials of the opposition Labour Party have also resigned. And this morning, Britain's finance minister insisted the economy can survive Brexit. It will not be plain sailing in the days ahead. But let me be clear, you should not underestimate our resolve. We were prepared for the unexpected and we are equipped for whatever happens. Secretary of State John Kerry will meet today with officials in Brussels and London to discuss this crisis. CBS News financial contributor Melody Hobson is in London. Melody, good morning. Good morning. There's already a petition by some three million with signatures calling for a second vote on Brexit. What do you think will happen? Well, this is a big one because there are over three million signatures in just two days. No one expected that, the sense of regret. You only need 100,000 signatures for this issue to be debated in Parliament, likely will be debated. They're asking for Parliament not to sign into effect Article 50, which says we want a divorce. Now, this is dicey because you're then asking a democratically elected government to go against the will of the people. That's a political hot potato that not a lot of people are going to want to talk. Touch. Which should the U.S. be most concerned about, Melody, at this point? A domino effect. Is this the first country to go? Now, the headlines here initially, I've been in Europe all weekend, were the U.K. the first to go out of the EU. I thought that was very, very startling. There have been these movements afoot in other countries like France, like Denmark, like the Netherlands, saying maybe we should have a referendum and go too. And so that's the big thing to be worried about, that the whole thing falls apart, which is not good news in a global economy. Uh, Melody, now that we've had some time to look at the results and look at the voting, what do you think drove this vote? Clearly, it was around immigration. I have to tell you, I've anecdotally been asking everyone I see, were you in or out? What did you vote? The cab driver on the way here, an African born in the UK said, I voted to exit. I want it out because of immigration. And then he said, quite sheepishly, I didn't understand the economic implications. I think there's a lot of that going on right now. But immigration was the headline. And I don't think it was really well understood. You mean there's a kind of bias remorse? Yeah. No question about it. I mean, there is shock here. It's palpable. You can feel it. It's amazing to be here ha after something like this has occurred because it's not quite something you can describe unless you can see it up close. And then, Melody, it's so surprising to hear that the day after the vote, the most thing Googled in Britain was what is the EU the second day most, after? Second most that's, Googled, yeah. that's right. I think it's a, a, a sense that people really didn't understand what they were voting for, what the EU me really means. It's not just about open borders and free immigration. It's about trade policy. You know, there's a lot wrapped up into this, this state, this group of states. You could call it the United States of Europe that came into being after World War II. And people really didn't understand what it means to undo this. This is a gigantic divorce. Estimates of over 100,000 pages of treaties in countries around the world that have to be amended. The British government is going to be focused on this for two years. I don't know how they'll get anything else done. And so, then so what will be the impact? Let's assume it goes through and let's assume it goes through as quickly as some members of the European Union would like to see it go through, uh, even though uh, Chancellor of West of Germany has said she wants them to act not so rapidly. The so assume it goes through and reasonably quick. What will be the impact on the global economy? Well, I think the best thing is to understand that we're in an unprecedented scenario here. The impact is not probably, we, we can't fully anticipate it. I think initially the thing I'm going to be watching to see is slowing economic growth, not only in the UK, but in broader Europe. And ultimately, does that catch on to the rest of the world? Initially, you might see a recession. Here, they're acting as if a recession is a foregone conclusion, mm -hmm. that this economy will slow down in such a way to, to suggest a retreat. Ultimately, I'm a believer in what Warren Buffett says. Of course, he's the greatest investor of all times, so it's not hard to believe what he says. <laughs> but he says markets are stronger than governments. I think ultimately that will be true. These markets will prevail around the world, but it's going to be volatile and bumpy. And I think right now I would tell people, as they say, 
stay in Britain, stay calm and carry on. You want to make sure you're not doing anything rash in this kind of environment, even though it will probably be very bumpy. Yeah, they it dropped 600 points on Friday, and they expect a little more today. But you're saying don't do anything right now. Calm I is like a good thing. Don't do something, stand there. That's a famous line from the Vanguard CEO, Jack Bogle. Yeah. Just stay still. This is not the time to start selling out of your 401k or panicking. It's going to be rough, but we will get through it. All right. An upper chin. Thank you so much, Melody. Thanks.